Pat, uh, it's, it's noise is deafening down here. It's very hard to hear you, but I've been watching Borg. We've been watching Borg change ends uh, for three sets. It's getting hard to concentrate now because McEnroe is arguing with the umpire about that call in the tiebreaker. But every time Borg walks past me, his eyes get a little narrower. Go a little deeper back into his head. He's, I think he's going into a zone at the moment. He could win this set. Borg will serve. The stadium lights are on. They're not really having much effect on the court at this stage because it's not getting it's not really dark yet. Love 15. You know, Pat, you take it from Borg's standpoint. He says, boy, I'm lucky to have won that set. I'm glad I won it. Now I've got to really stay tough. Mackman says, i got to get it right back right now if I can. <laughs> Borg starting to go for his shots a little bit more, and he's starting to make more of them. Earlier, Borg tried to pick up the tempo, but just didn't make the shots. Starting to serve better, too. 30, 15. All double fault number five by Borg. First game, fourth set. McEnroe leads two sets to one. Meadow, New York. Men's singles final. Oh. Borg McEnroe. You saw the situation. McEnroe serving with new balls. First serve was a fault. <laughs> Fifteen low. Was wide. I sense a bit of a sinking spell in McEnroe. He's up two sets to one. He may be a little disappointed he didn't put that third set away, but if he keeps the tempo up, the pace up, he should be in pretty good shape. Borg, of course, may have something to say about that. Love fourth set. Looks in pain almost. McEnroe again serving with new balls. So when a ball boy or a ball girl throws him a ball that's been used, he wants to get a new one because it's more compact. It's going to go faster. It's going to be tougher to handle. He's picked off that volley when Borg tries to go cross court like that. Do you think Borg might change a little bit now? Or what do you think? He may, but uh, it can also be a situation where McEnroe reads the way he's set up, the way he's going for it. Oh! May just be a good guess. Like we are going to run long. If 
things continue to develop like they are but you will see the entire schedule which we'll show you in just a minute of the regularly scheduled CBS programs on Sunday night. You can kiss this one goodbye. Report me to tomorrow. That's what's going to happen tonight. They will air in their entirety immediately following tennis. 60 minutes, Archie Bunker's place, one day at a time, Alice the Jeffersons and Trapper John, M.D. Won't miss any of this or any of that. 30. And some of this may take a while now. You get the feeling that things are starting to change a little bit. out to a 2-1 lead in set number four. McEnroe is up two sets to one. The preceding message was brought to you by the United States Tennis Association. Borg, of course, with his back to you there, and McEnroe serving. Borg is up 2-1, fourth set. This is also exclusive coverage by CBS, I believe. I think you're right again, my colleague. I still think Borg is uncomfortable somehow. Mm -hmm. You see their head-to-head -head record, Borg five, McEnroe three. That, that was the kind of shot he just doesn't miss, particularly when it's pressure time. And from now on, it is pressure time for him because he's down two sets to one. 30 low. He doesn't look like uh, everything is quite like he'd like it to be. Obviously not if he's down two sets to one. In the interview after his after he defeated Creek, someone asked him, "Well, were you concerned when he won the first two sets?" And he looked at it sort of funny. He said, "Of course I was concerned. You know, how can you not be concerned when you're down two sets to love against anybody?" Game back and roll. Games are two all. Getting to a situation where people in the crowd, one will holler, holler for Borg, the other hollers for McEnroe, and they get going back and forth. <laughs> Borg some, somehow doesn't seem to have that toss out in front like he normally does and serve effectively. Fifteen below. remember earlier Pat talked about some of the forehand volleys that Borg missed when he had some wrist involved there he got down to it very nice his very short compact little punch at the ball and made it very nicely
game. Borg, he leads Bjorn three games Borg two. starting to pick up the pace. I knew exactly how we were going to fill it. You were going to take your happy feet down and dance. <laughs> I didn't bring my cane and top hat. Double. That's the fifth one for McEnroe. Uh, 15. on that second serve Pat really went after with some authority got to keep trying to make things happen Break point for Borg and McEnroe made some shot 15, up the line 40. and deep. Watch again and watch what that lands maybe a foot from the baseline and Borg just oh well just an unbelievable wait, wait, shot wait. back up the line as we come back live at 1540 McEnroe serving 2-3 in the fourth set McEnroe won the first two sets Borg came back and won the third. 30, 40. Good serve by McEnroe. Hard to do that for a left-hander, isn't it? Well, certainly it is harder to do, and it's certainly not what the returner is looking for, the serve out to the forehand side from a lefty. You're expecting to come to the backhand. Oh, a big chance that time for Dude. Borg. McEnroe made a good serve. Borg got the return down. Made McEnroe hit a half volley that was not deep and didn't have much pace on it, but Bjorn could not make the shot. Deuce. First serve. Always correct. When you hit that kind of a serve and your opponent doesn't return it, you're you hate to hear that call let. No real argument. Oh! Realize we had no airplanes at all today after all that discussion and the other days. Perfect for the final. Tribute to our producer. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, Borg did a terrific job just to get to the ball. And he got up a reasonable lob. It wasn't real tough, but at least you make the other guy beat you. McEnroe has the ad. Trying to get even at three all in the fourth set. Couple of different sources of information, but it's been a long time since Borg lost a five set match. Several years. Game, back and roll. Games are three all. Let me tax you a little bit more. When's the last time a right hander won the U.S. Open? 
quiet, quiet please. please. Thank, Thank you. you. Will you give me a couple minutes to yeah. think about that? I'll be back. All right. Let's go down to a right-hander, John Newcomb. Pat, I, uh, I got to admire McEnroe the way he's hanging in. Wasn't that long ago he finished a, a enormous battle with Jimmy Connors winning a tie break in the fifth set. This is tension packing, showing on McEnroe's face, but he's doing a great job. First serve. chance but he missed it. Without looking in the record book, uh, tell me who was the last righty. It's the guy that's working with us, sitting down courtside, John Newcomb. That was what, 1940? <laughs> I don't know, we'll ask him. Three all, 15 all. Fourth set. scratching his chin in the background, sort of laughing, smiling at Mac, or letting off a little steam. way back. Oh. Oh. Must have missed by four feet. 40, 40. That's a 30. six double fault for Borg. And that was well, well behind the service line. And that could happen when you, you take, the good players take as hard a swing at the second serve as they do the first serve. They just try to get around the edge of the ball and create more spin. And he just caught a little bit too much of the ball. 30. This would be a time for McEnroe to try to pick up the tempo attack if he can. That's what he's doing. But Borg had the James answer Borg. with a tremendous forehand up the line. So Bjorn Borg in quest Borg of the Grand Slam is staying alive. McEnroe will serve at 3-4 in the fourth. He is up two sets to one, but things are looking a little bit more shaky. From McEnroe's point of view, that is. Remember that stunned silence of the crowd earlier? They are just buzzing right now. And it's still a crowd. Nobody's going to win anyway. Had a tiebreaker in the first set, which McEnroe won, 7 4. And we had a tiebreaker in the third set, which Borg won to stay alive. And he won that one seven points to five. Wow. Terrific serve. And yeah, that one, he cut right into his body, jammed him. When someone's serving at you and they're jamming you, one of the ways to, to get out of that is to take a different position and move, slide one or the other. First service. A little tougher to hit a moving target. Oh. 
Patrick, I smell tiebreaker in this fourth set. Look what a sight. In the island of Manhattan and the sun just on the other side. We got some sight right here. Games are four all. A big apple, nothing like it. Surprise move by Ford under Love. pressure. I'm not going to stay back and let the other guy come in for a change. I'll serve and come in. He caught McEnroe by surprise. He also made a very crisp backhand volley. Uh oh. Ole! <laughs> Ole! <laughs> With all the pressure and all the tension and all the hype. 15. It was still oh. time for a little fun. And they talk about the iceberg and the bad kid from Douglaston. You don't think they have a sense of humor? Let's take another look. The racket comes out. Bingo, that's broken. Macron said, just get it in the play, Borgs, and bowl it. you got to make a better return than that. Any doubt about him being McEnroe an athlete? McEnroe drops his racket. McEnroe played soccer. And that's what happens with 80 pounds of pressure on the strings the racket speed of Borg trying to serve meeting deco turf <laughs> you think they'll find him for throwing his racket no I think they'll just take the racket four all 15 all four set Again, no wrist movement 30, in that forehand 15. volley of Borg. It was crisp. It was a good solid one, and it's 30-15. That's as it should be done, right? Indeed. Keep it short. Keep the wrist locked up. said it was out by a yard but it wasn't <laughs> and this is as good as a yard game board sure is game board five games to four and board moves out to a 5-4 lead in the fourth set McEnroe leads two sets to one finals of the men's singles 1980 United States Open Championship let's go down to courtside John Newcomb is there and let's get a report from him well, Pat, uh, you know, the match is just getting so exciting now, and I really think that McEnroe is straining more. When they're changing ends, and McEnroe is sitting down in his chair, he's slumping into his chair. But as I said before, he's fighting really hard. He's uh, going to make a fight out of it. He'll go right down to the wire, but that could be the edge if it does go to five sets. All right, Duke, thank you. It is five for Borg in the fourth. McEnroe won the first two sets and looked like it looked as if one time he was about to put the championship away and defend it successfully. And indeed he still might. But saw Borg has come fighting back. Excuse me, Pat, saw McEnroe sort of jogging in place. That's sort of a sign that your the legs might be getting a little tight. Match about three hours and 20 minutes old right now. 
That's a lot of running. We both had five set semifinals. It seems like it was forever ago, but it was just yesterday. It's wide. 40 low. You ready for another tiebreaker? Why not? It makes it exciting for everyone. Serving with new balls. games and games and games and not go for that kind of a shot but when it's close and when it's important that's when he'll take some chances and in most cases he's good enough to pull it off McEnroe really moved in quickly on that second serve his volley caught the tape and fell back you see McEnroe starting to show more emotion that would indicate agitation inside, tension and nervousness. Maybe the same thing going on with Borg, you just don't see it. He doesn't show it. <laughs> Borg made a surprise play and I think a smart play, but he missed the volley. McEnroe had no idea he was coming into the net. Started very late. On purpose. Wait till McEnroe turns his side, looks at the ball, doesn't know you're coming, then you sneak in. He floats the backhand with underspin, trying to get it deep, and you got a good volley. Oh brother, this is this is really some tension time right now. Two errors in a row by Borg. The question is Macro come in behind the return or just chip it and stay back? Come in. No. Nope. He started and went back. Break point for McEnroe. Pat, you're absolutely right. McEnroe was going to try to come in behind the return of the second serve, but the, the serve was in a position that didn't let him make a good shot and come forward, so he was smart enough to stop and stay back. Mm. What about this serve? I think McEnroe will gamble and come in. Let's see. It was long. It was very close, but there was no hesitation on the call. And there was no movement from Borg that would indicate that he thought it might have been. And I like the effort by McEnroe at that stage. It was a gutsy play, but boy, if he pulls it off, he's got a service break. It's back to Deuce. Borg got to start wondering whether he should take some speed off the first serve and spin it. So Macro can't come in off the second serve. Set, first serve. Still 
Still got two. sort of shake of the head by McEnroe told a bit of the story he didn't make that bad a shot up the line but the champion Borg was there read it well and knocked off the volley he has the advantage I think you'll see McEnroe try to come again if he can second serve. Second serve. Looks like he's going to stay back he was going to stay back that time Pat you're right not now wide Deuce. you know there are two ways to do that Pat you say I'm going to charge I'm going to take it and charge and gamble no matter where the serve comes or you try to do that but if the serve is in a position where you can't really get a good piece of it you stay back you jump back out and get behind the baseline and you have to make that decision in less than a second thought it was going out had a chance at it could have made the shot and it was in by eight, 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 four. a foot at least we'll take another look and watch you'll see macro was there he could make a play as Pat said he chose to let it go and that's a really a tactical error a mental error because when you have a plan of ball in a crucial situation unless it's going way out you make the play Game goes to Borg. And he leads six games to five in the fourth set. You know, you've read that Borg does not did not like to play at night in New York City, but he's playing <laughs> at night now and it's going to get darker. Badly. You didn't know where he was going to stop and let it bounce and come up or move forward and try to volley. He'd end up half volleying carelessly and missed it. Love 15. Borg's return was good now. And that is Kay McEnroe down the right of his screen, scratched her forward. Couple over in the red shirt. John McEnroe Sr., the parents of that young man struggling out there trying to defend his title. Long. 15. Oh. Borg upset with himself. He thought he had made it. The capacity crowd that was here when this match started is still here. You know, the key pad is side. at the very top. You look around the top, you still see all those heads silhouetted against the sky. You're right. Everybody's here. Good offensive lob by Borg with the skies. You're 15, watching CBS 30. Sports exclusive coverage of the finals. The men's finals of the 1980 United States Open Championships. The exclusive from CBS Sports. We're already half an hour over what we had planned, scheduled, but we're going to stay. <laughs>
Oh, that's a good volley. It was also an excellent second serve. 30. 30. Oh. That's the way the good ones do it. It is a difficult time. It is pressure. But they are a bit fatalistic. I've got to make a good shot. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to charge in that net and see if I can make a good shot. 30 all. been a very effective oh, serve when McEnroe has been able to get it in and that's the sixth ace. Boy, what a time. <laughs> Great return by Borg. Deuce. Again, the high quality that we saw in the Wimbledon final, not so much a question of errors. Quality people, great players making great shots under pressure. Question of winners. Another gigantic serve in the same spot. Borg got his racket on it, but couldn't get it back in play. McEnroe trying to get even at six on the fourth set and go into another tiebreaker. Almost like a replay. It was, except it was off the second serve that Dude, time. Man. Again, the McEnroe clan. <laughs> oh, boy. You really have to admire both players because they have played extremely well. Borg got a shaky start, and part of that is credit to McEnroe, but we're in a real dogfight right now, and both are producing big shots. Do you think, Tony, that he'd come back with that same serve three times in a row like he had tried right there? I really didn't. You've done it twice. You got away with it twice. It's time to sort of move elsewhere. But on the other hand, mixing it up is not necessarily hitting a different place. Hit it three times the same place. It might be mixing it up. Because the other guy doesn't think you'll do it either. See if he tried. He tried. People who look at Calm might get ulcers, Pat. I was going to say, Leonard, he played when I played. He knows the pressure. Borg almost went in the seats. Deuce. I think he stepped into a row of flowers, potted flowers there, and that could be dangerous. He's okay. Dropped his racket caught himself. He made a terrific return and McEnroe was up to the task with a good volley and we're back to Deuce. Five, six, four set. McEnroe up two sets to one. U.S. Open singles final. How good can it get? And it's McEnroe. He pulled the string, Pat. McEnroe took some speed off. Borg was looking for speed and he was out in front of it. Miss hit it would not be a bad play again because Borg is standing so far back. Spin it, try to get it up 
high on board and get in. the sixth double fault for McEnroe and it's back to Deuce. Really, really a, a bad error, a bad double fault in that McEnroe is not coming in behind the serve. He knows Borg's not going to come in, so why try to play it that tough, that close if you're not going to come in? If you're coming in, fine, go for it. With Deuce. all that in mind, it would seem like it is a good idea for Borg to come in, if he can. Now again, if Macro is not going to come in behind his second serve, there's no sense in taking any chance with a second serve because you know Borg is not coming in behind the return. Another break point for Borg. And a four. Do you think Borg knows that he's playing here at night now? He started in the daytime. Well, I don't think so. I don't think it really makes any difference. Just what Tony's alluding to is that uh, he objected last year particularly to playing at night. That's when he lost to Tanner, but look at that site. How could you object to anything like that? Yeah, because we're playing in a bowl down here. Again, set point for Borg, trying to get even at two sets apiece. I don't think so. I'm just going to say, don't let that fool you. Guy trying to take it on the rise, let it get away. But you got to know Borg is now pumped up. I was just thinking that in the press conference when this is over, if someone asked Borg, what were you thinking in the third <laughs> set, I'll bet you any money to say I thought I was going to lose in three straight at that point. Here he is in set five. Now he thinks he can win. I hope they don't ask him if he was concerned again. <laughs> Becoming more aggressive. that that young man is under he's never won the Grand Slam he's never won this tournament Game four, Healy 
leads the final set. We're in set five, and Borg has won the first game of the fifth set. Quiet, Quiet, please. Nuke, you still there? Thank you. Yeah, Pat. What's Sorry. What's going on in your head? It's a little uh, noisy down here when the players walk out. I really think that McEnroe is starting to feel it now, mentally and physically. He's going to have to, uh, you Americans say, suck it up and get on with the job. <laughs> I've heard that said. He did. I got to find out what the Aussies say in the same situation. <laughs> Well, you know, if you wanted to write a script, write about the semis, the women's final. And now the men's final. If we wrote it the way it's happened, someone would think we were faking it. Thirty love. Thirty. Really not a bad effort, not a bad thought by McEnroe. He's up 30 love. Borg is deep behind the baseline. Try to make the drop volley. He really didn't have to make a very good one to win the point. Try to cut it too fine. 30 15. Live coverage, CBS. up his hands and shakes his head the real answer is you better get that approach shot deeper than that or Bjorn Borg is going to flat knock it by you what just went through your mind Remember the one Mackman let go with that top spin? As I saw him let it go out, but boy, <laughs> that might be another one because it had a lot of top on it, but it went well out. McEnroe seems to be able, when he needs to, to come up with a good, tough serve. And he does again. He might be in trouble. Right? Let's take a look and see if Borg's shot coming up next hits the top of the net because McEnroe is over there. And let's see if the ball ticks the net. Yeah, it, it did. Because McEnroe was there, not to say he would make the shot. But it ticked the net and jumped over his racket. And it's deuce. McEnroe serving at love one in the fifth and final set of the 1980 U.S. Open Championships. Advantage McEnroe. One all in set number five. Ever been to a heavyweight championship fight? Well, I had hundred dollar ringside seats for a fight one time, but the the tunder from, as a matter of fact, from Sweden, put Floyd Patterson away before I could get there. When I got there, there were hundred people in the ring. Will Hansen? Yep. This is similar. And there again is a, is a very interesting play by Borg. And again, why he's a really a tremendous champion. One on the fifth, he serves and comes in the net behind it. He hasn't done that six times, perhaps, in the whole match. Borg's approach shot barely landed past the service line. You let a good player like McEnroe feast on that, you're in big trouble. And vice versa.
15. I have no idea what McEnroe was thinking that time. He was in no man's land, we call quicksand, trying to half volley. Flat footed? Yeah, half volley shot by Borg. I mean, between the baseline and the service line, when they're driving on you, you know, you're in big trouble. Play by McEnroe. Well, Pat, you, you describe that same situation over and over. If it works, it's a smart play. If it doesn't work, you know, well, maybe you question the logic. And they'll ask you about it later on. Right. That's two all. Games one all. Game score. Third game, fifth set, 30 all. Right play by Borg. 40, 30. Gloria Kramer in the lower right. Jack Kramer smiling. Don Budge in the back. Lori Budge. Frank Parker. Boy, the history of the game of tennis sitting right there. McEnroe would be smart. Say, here, take my racket. You try it for a while. Fred Perry and Althea Gibson sitting up behind them, too. A lot of talent there, as you mentioned. Borg has the ad. Good shot down the line has held his serve. John McEnroe, the defending champion, feels things slipping away. Let's get a courtside report from a former champion and still a champion, John Newcomb. Well, Pat, I, I just sitting here, you know, it's the first time I've been on the court under this sort of pressure, but it's the first time I've really sat this close to the Take court and observed it. Please. And I'm really fascinated just thinking Quiet, what please. the uh, guys are going through. Two hours ago, Borg Thank was you. on the ropes and it didn't look like he'd be able to pull out of it. Now McEnroe's the one who's sort of on the ropes and he's fighting to stay alive. It's an absorbing match and I think it may go down as one of the best matches ever at this stage. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. Thank you, John. That backhand return by Borg out the other way as he hit that one is sort of like what we're talking about. There is Virginia Wade on the left in our picture, and she's biting her knuckles. She's not <laughs> even playing. You know, there's no prize money involved, Virginia. You don't get any. I don't think I ever saw anybody bite their knuckles. And that return by Borg is like macro serving. McEnroe went to sleep. McEnroe should be out covering the ball up the line. Borg was late getting there. He could only go up the line comfortably. McEnroe didn't even move that way, and he paid the penalty. He's now serving 1-2, love 35th and final set. This is for all the marbles. Don't ever underestimate John McEnroe. I don't think he's dead yet. Was it you that said that it's a game of inches? No. And someone did, and that one hit the net, and that inch. I'm glad I wasn't the one who said that. 15-30. Oh, good, sir. Did you see where Borg finished, Pat? He was almost in the linesman's lap over by the flowers that broke so wide at 30 all. Mm. This is really pressure. Thirty. 
You know, that's a serve that Macro could use more frequently. He can kick it up the other way instead of slicing it. Seventh Deuce. double fault by McEnroe. The umpire is as involved as everyone else. He called it game Borg, which was incorrect. It's actually Deuce. The umpire is Ken Sly. Deuce. It's magic. McEnroe looked like he almost gave Borg a head fake on that shot. He looked one way, went the other. Advantage McEnroe trying to get the two all in the final set. Fault called on John McEnroe. He only has one person to blame, and that's himself. Stay away from that line. There's no way they can call it on you. I'm thinking about Borg, who rifle at return. That might have been a winner. Money's worth. Quiet, please. Two all in fifth set. Pat, you know, McNamara made a super offensive Quiet, lob, please. and Borg made the ideal play. He got back. He lobbed it deep and high and got back in the point. He did lose a point, but at least he made McNamara beat him. <laughs> Borg, in the last few games he served, has won him but has been laboring a little bit with that first serve. We heard all of our affiliated stations along the line that we'll, on the next court change, give you a station break. 30 long. Fifteen seventh double fault by Borg. Both done that seven times. You know, Pat. I just think in uh, your sport, they got those goalposts. <laughs> if they put goalposts up here at the end of this, they would tear them down, wouldn't they? I have a lot of sports, but I think I know what you're talking about. That's all. I guess I should have said when you're in your prime, then it would have been. A lot easier to figure oh, out. I haven't gotten there yet. What a volley! The board. We will be back with more exciting action from the National Tennis Center in Cushing Meadow, New York. After this word from your local station. Well, Pat, as I uh, said a while ago, and Borg was passing me more and more as this match went on, I could see, just looking at his eyes, he seems to get a little more intense, and at the same time, his movement has become a lot livelier around the court, and of course, that's only natural because he's come back from two sets to love down, 
and he's leading 3-2 in the fifth set. I think the players are going to speak for themselves about what's going to happen now because it's right down to the wire and uh, it's just up to them. Who wants to win the most? All right, Nuke, who are you picking? I'd hate to go against Borg at this stage. He okay. hasn't lost a five-setter since 1974. That's a gotcha. So John Newcomb, the champion, has picked Borg. John McEnroe is serving at 2-3 in the fifth. May have some other ideas. 15 low. We say it, we have said it, it is a cliche, but it's a kind of match now that you hate to see anyone lose. Someone is going to do it. Someone's going to win, but it has been a good one. Oh. Pat, we lose sight of it, but it's been four hours and five minutes since these players walked out on the court. That's a long time to be out in front of all these people, concentrating, running, and doing all the work that they've been doing. Especially after they both played five setters yesterday in the semifinals. the fifth. Patch you know, Nuke's talking about the eyes. I'm sure in your sport you played the football. You could look at a guy and know if he still had it, right? We do it in tennis all the time. You're always looking at the other guy and see, you know, is he folding? Is he nervous? These two guys are still there. They got plenty left. Borg doesn't believe it, I don't think. You don't see him question much. That's his way of questioning right there. I don't think Borg would have had much of a play on the ball. He could have gotten his racket on it. Who knows what he would have done with it. He thinks it was a bad call. You know what he's doing right now? He's regrouping. He's looking over now in the direction of his wife and uh, over at Leonard Berglund. But all that's not going to help. And he knows it. He says, okay, I'm down to love 15. so many stories about Ted Williams and Stan Musial had such good eyes at the plate and the umpires were nervous when they questioned a call they said maybe I made a mistake and Borg seldom questions anything it's got to make a line to say wow you know maybe I don't know maybe I did miss it double fault number eight by Borg that one service break obviously at this point would be very key and very crucial. You can almost write a book. When Borg is under pressure, in trouble, he attacks. Yet everybody else talks about Borg being steady, playing the baseline. Again, he took the offensive. Coming in there too. That serve just barely missed. You might hear a few whistles. No question. Another double foul. That's number nine. 30, 40. And again, that's uncharacteristic. And is also break point for John McEnroe. It's what you spoke of, Pat. One service break now is obviously extremely crucial. He 
you're going to hear some boos, but he's not complaining. He's mad at himself, and that's all. He may be mad at board for making the shot. <laughs> well, that's his opponent. You know, a, a, a sentence came to my mind. Borg says, I'm not under pressure. I can make the big shots. I can make the right shot at the big time, and he certainly did it there. It's wide. And, and it's, it's McEnroe. McEnroe. Break point. Again, I like McEnroe's attempt. Let's make something happen. If he can knock it by me, good luck to you, but there's a lot of pressure on. McEnroe breaks. Game, and he takes the lead in the fifth Two and balls, final please. set, four games to three. McEnroe and Borg, a rematch of what took place at Wimbledon, and I think equally as good, don't you, Trey? I certainly do. I'm just going to say this is not Wimbledon. This is the U.S. Open, but it's the same story. We're in the fifth set. Borg won that one in five. We'll see what happens here. McEnroe does have a service break, serving at 4-3. Remind our affiliated stations that in the next court change, we'll have a 90-second uh, commercial availability for you, local station. love Fantastic play by John McEnroe. Let's watch it. Diving, stabbing volley. Borg Boy, has his choice. Blah. McEnroe guesses right. And now, bingo, into the open court. Just inside the sideline. And it is 40 love McEnroe serving, trying to extend his lead to 5-3 in the final set. Borg knocks off a winner. He also finished about four feet inside the baseline. He was walking right into it. No sense hitting it falling backwards. 40-15. Boy, that's what makes the good ones good, the great ones great. Produce under pressure. as he can go he's got a hold serve or his dreams of a grand slam are gone wait, for wait, 1980. Please, please, please. Wait, wait. 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 just make a small correction of what i said a minute ago as it's clarified a little bit to me the net, next Commercial break for those of you in our affiliated station lineup will be a network commercial, not a local. You know what Borg's task is. McEnroe should try to win this one just as hard as he can. Pretty. 
you know, we talked about a bad knee, bad ankles, <laughs> tight legs, and this. Look what we're down to. Service ace from four. 40. Low. off a winner. Whole serve at love. Game board. And it's 5-4 McEnroe on the fifth. The championship. Try it, please. This has really been. Thank John you. Newcomb is down at courtside. Tony Trabert is here at the National Tennis please, Center. And I'm Pat Summerall. McEnroe serving 5-4 in the fifth. And he's 21 years old trying to clamp down his second U.S. Open title. Was out. Borg shot was wide. This is still live. The U.S. Open Tennis Championships and Borg again takes a look. The ball is out. Right, please. Umpire said the call was correct. The ball was out. 15 love. It was about 14-13 in the tiebreaker at Wimbledon. McEnroe had the same kind of high forehand volley with Borg in the backhand corner. He swung at it and missed it just like that. McEnroe ended up winning the tiebreaker. But what a crucial error. Both there and here, 15 all. Leonard Berglund on the right of your screen, out of Bjorn Borg. His hopes of a Grand Slam, a glimmer, and that is John McEnroe please, Sr. Please, that is gentlemen. Mrs. McEnroe on the right Thank of your you. screen, and it is 40-15, double match point, four hours and 22 minutes later. has defended his title and that is hard to do Patrick getting there is one thing 
back. Water, water. John, right here, you are deserved. We'll be back with John Newcomb and a conversation with John McEnroe in just a minute. 1980 U.S. Open champion. Joe Carrico down congratulating John McEnroe, Billy Talbot there too. Boy, they deserve a lot of credit as does the champion. John McEnroe, 21 years old and what he's accomplished is absolutely amazing. He's standing up now with John Newcomb. And uh, let's go down to John right now. John, we're on this one over here. Congratulations on a super match, especially coming back last night after a 7 6 in the fifth against Jimmy. Was it harder physically or mentally to out there today? I think it was hard both. I was, uh, I didn't feel too bad in the beginning. Of Now they want you to talk loud. I didn't feel too uh, bad in the beginning of the match. I felt pretty good. I think as the match wore on, I thought when I lost a four set, I was in a little trouble. But uh, luckily, I was able to. I said it was only one more set anyway, so I was just going to hang in there. I had, a, I had a feeling that at the end of the match there, you may have been getting a little tired mentally. <laughs> and physically. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was just trying to hold my serve and try to uh, just one game try to break. And that's what happened at three all. Well, congratulations for a, a super match, and I sure, I'm sure you won a lot of fans here. Thank you. Now let's go over to Jack. Well, finally, this 13-day marathon of tennis is over, and it has produced authentic champions in every division. It will be remembered for many things, things like planes and trains and ice cream cones and superior tennis and the return of Chrissy Everett, who came all the way back yesterday after being wherever she was supposed to have been. And she discovered, like Jack Nicholas did earlier this year, that when she got back, the American public had taken her to their hearts. It will be remembered for last night's semi-final here between Connors and McEnroe, both of them going like Sugar Ray Leonard and Robert Duran, punching away the afternoon far into the summer dusk in one of the fiercest matches of the tournament. And it will be remembered especially for this finals tonight. This was not Wimbledon revisited. You must remember that Wimbledon is a titled lady giving you high tea on a well-manicured lawn. The American championship is Dolly Parton giving you a hot dog and soda out by the playground. They're different and they should be. But the finalists were the same and these two played a magnificent match today. They are playing matches we'll talk about 25 years from now. We hope you'd enjoy this great tennis. We all at CBS enjoy bringing it to you. For all of them, this is Jack Whitaker, CBS Sports, Flushing Meadows.